So the Ferguson issue is split right down the line, just like the O.J. Simpson verdict, just like the uh, Rodney King verdict, right down racial lines. The white people are against or or for whatever, and the black people are against or for whatever, right? I want to tell you a very specific detail that convinced people that the 18-year-old kid was a is a monster, right? They showed you a two-second clip from a convenience store. Now, the actual story has come out from the convenience store of what actually happened. I have contended that the person in the video is was not Michael Brown, and I still contend that. In the video, you see a man, a large man. He's an old man. He's like 40 years old. And you see another person, and you see a third person that the old man pushes back and walks out the door. The convenience store has stated that what happened was this man came in, bought cigars or cigarillos or I don't, I don't know what they're called and was leaving a customer in the convenience store took it upon themselves to think that the person was robbing the store of cigars call the police another person approached the man at the door whereby you see the man push him the convenience store told the guy at the door he paid for them leave him alone it was the customer that called the police and the customer that claimed that the convenience store was robbed not the store and they have maintained that they never made the call from beginning up until today they hired a lawyer to say so they did not call the police a customer called the police everybody's convinced that what they see is truth and what the media tells them that they're watching is truth I want you to be educated. I want you to question everything. How come we only see one camera angle and two seconds of video? Because that's what they want you to see. They want you to see a black man pushing another guy who came up to him. And they want you to think that that's the convenience store clerk or employee. And the convenience store clerk says they never did anything. They never called the police. They never contended that anybody stole anything. And they contend that they told the customer he has paid for the cig cigars. Leave him alone. And it's the customers. Now, what I think happened was the customer felt threatened that a black man came into the store when they were in the store. It's the 1920s all over again. They call the police because they felt threatened by a black man. Now, you want to say this is not a race racist thing? It is clearly racist. And I'm not a race monger. I'm saying I'm saying that the 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 Asian convenience store owner is siding with the people that this wasn't Michael Brown. So then we we turn then to the case at uh, on point and and this is not going to come out. Why is this not going to come out? Because then they're going to say, oh, uh, he attacked the police, and and you all believe that too. You believe everything they tell you, everything they tell you. You just run with it. Why? Because they know that deep down inside you do not trust black people. If you have called mike brown a thug based on no more evidence than what the media is telling you i'm sorry to tell you you're racist and you don't trust black people you are prejudiced you are a bigot that's the definition of it of prejudice you have set in your mind a set of checkpoints when you see black black don't trust him he's a uh, ignorant uh violent uh, criminal. Those are the checkpoints. And what does the media do to you? <gasps> he was an ignorant, violent criminal guy. He's he's a thug, 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 thug. They repeated it 50 times in one day on all the news channels. Now, I'm telling you a different story. I'm telling you that the clerk, the store, the people who know, 
said that the person in the video paid for the cigars and told the people, but the people uh, call the police anyway. Why? Because they think that they're doing something right. They felt threatened. They, they felt that this, this guy was black. Obviously, he stole the cigars. When the clerk told him and spoke out and said, what are you doing? Leave him alone. He has paid for the cigars. I contend that the person in the video isn't Mike Brown to begin with at all. He's not even wearing the same clothes. But people are so convinced that, oh, yeah, this must be, this must be true. He, he must. It's your prejudice speaking. And the media has trained you to have these prejudices. Even people who've never laid eyes in person on a black person. Oh, they must be violent. We can't have everybody be Denzel Washington, Bill Cosby, or me. You see me in my videos. I'm not an unintelligent thug. I, I told my roommate that I can count on one hand the times that I've been in a fight in my entire life. And I said that two of those fights were just for training. It's the prejudiced people who and who don't who violently violently don't want to admit that they're prejudiced. That the media can say something and set them off. Oh yes, he's a thug. Yes, yes, I agree. Yes, he's a thug. He definitely did. Oh yes, he's a monster. So they call a human a monster. You are suffering from this media bias, this attack on the black man, this war on the black man. I see it over and over and over. We have Don Lemon, who is uh, one of the chief anchors on, what is it, MS, uh, uh, M uh, CNN? I'm sorry, NBC, coming out and saying that he has suffered from prejudice also. He, news anchor, famous, the face of NBC. Light skinned black, you know, the, the, the non threatening black. He's saying he suffered every prejudice that you can name that any, any black person has ever named. He said he suffered all of that. And he continues to suffer all of that because being black in the United States is warfare at any level. And this guy's rich, huh? This guy's a millionaire. I suffered it. And I've gone to the most, the finest private schools. The, the finest restaurants the I lived in mansions. I had servants at my beck and call, but I too have suffered prejudice from people. I have people say, Oh, he can't come over my house. I can't come over your house. I can buy your house. I can buy every house of every grandmother, grandfather, uh, brother, sister. I can buy your entire family. What the hell are you talking about? I can't come over your house. Who are you? You're nobody. You're filth. I even had, when I was in law school, befriended an undergraduate white guy who invited me over to his house in New Orleans in the French Quarter, and it was literally falling apart. And I walked in there, and they looked at me like I was scum. Oh, they were just, you couldn't, you was palpable. I left within, within five minutes. I said, I, I have to go. I'm sorry. I have other things to do. And it was literally a shack. There was cots. They slept on cots. The walls weren't walls. It was a shack. But these people felt because they were white that they were so much better than me. I'm in law school. Your kid is on scholarship uh, or on Pell Grants to go to, go to school, whatever the, the poor people use to go to college. I was on scholarship too, but I was on scholarship because I was real, ridiculously smart. I was actually making money going to law school. And these people were just, look, I mean, looking down their noses and they were filthy. <laughs> I'm over here wearing Calvin Klein dressed as a nut tea because that's, that's all I had. And these people were looking down. I mean, it's prejudice and it's warfare and it's, and it's worse, I believe, today than it was in the 70s. After, I'm, I'm going to say in the 70s. I'm not going to say the 50s or the 40s or anything like that, but it's worse than in the 70s. You know, black people weren't accepted quite. I mean, it's worse. I think it's worse. And I think this case, because the news is, is pointing it out, and they have FBI, CIA, National Guard, NSA, Homeland Security, down there, uh, ready to slaughter all of the residents. And the KKK is saying that uh, 
they have awoken a sleeping giant and they're going to come and murder all of the protesters. Understand that protesters and the people who were looting are two different people. They said that they're going to murder the protesters. So the KKK and MSNBC, I want you to point, I want you to listen to this. MSNBC had one of the grand wizards on their show to interview and they called them the traditionalist knights of the Ku Klux Klan. The traditionalists? So they're saying that the KKK holds, keeps the traditions of the United States? That should tell you something about MSNBC. Why would you even support that, that station at all? Or that, in, that entire company? What is it, GE? Why would you, or have I gone one of those two? Why would you support that? They call the KKK traditionalists. That should rankle any of you. That should, they are saying that the KKK are patriots, uh, upstanding citizens, uh, believe in marriage, believe in, in God. That's the traditionalists, right? That they are more Republican than the Republicans. When actuality, they are all Democrats to a man. It's a democratic institution, the KKK. That's why they're on MSNBC. That's why they're interviewing them on embassy as if they were one still relevant and two actually mattered. And then we see anonymous took the KKK and started revealing who they were hacking into their stuff and revealing who they were because who, what are they going to do? Is the KKK going to walk out there in uh fatigues with their face open? No, they're going to come uh, disguised so that they can get away with murder. That's how they operate. The most terroristic group in the United States who should be in Guantanamo Bay if we really want to throw somebody in there. And they're calling the protesters terrorists. I mean, they have a history of lynching, burning, blowing up children. This is the KKK. They're not a nice organization. They're not a legitimate organization. They're a branch of the Democrats to terrorize black people, Jews, gays, Asians, Mexicans. This is the United States, 2014. Thank you for watching the Chicago Live Show.